Hello, physical science. And for part three of unit one, we're going to talk about physical properties of matter. So what is a physical property? Well, a physical property is a characteristic of a material that can be observed and described, and it doesn't actually change the composition of that material. So just random examples would be the appearance of something, the texture of a material. Does it feel smooth? Does it feel rough? Um, is it soft? Is it hard? Stuff like that. Some examples we're going to explore today include viscosity, conductivity, malleability, hardness, boiling, and melting point, which also you can think of it as the freezing point and condensation point. So let's start with the first one, viscosity. What is viscosity? Viscosity is a tendency of a liquid to not flow. It's a tendency to not flow. So if you have a high viscosity, you have a high tendency not to flow. Why? Because that liquid is very thick. Examples would be honey and syrup. Honey and syrup moves very, very slowly because it's a very thick liquid. If you have a lower viscosity, that means you have a tendency to flow much, much, much faster. Examples, water. Water flows very, very quickly. It has a low viscosity because it's very, th uh, very thin. Hydrogen peroxide, the stuff that's in the brown bottle. Same thing. Uh, oil, usually, uh, depends on the type of oil, but let's just say um, cooking oil, usually flows pretty, pretty quick. So it has a low viscosity. I have a little video here we can look at. In this video, we have four jars. In the first jar, we have water. The second jar is corn syrup. The third jar is oil. And the fourth jar is honey. And we're going to drop a marble into each of these jars. And we're going to notice how fast the marble sinks to the bottom. So again, if you have a very low viscosity, which means you don't flow, or low viscosity means you do flow very quickly, the marble is going to sink very, very fast. If you have a high viscosity, which means you flow very slowly, the marble is going to slowly sink. So let's observe. When we drop the marble in the water, it sinks straight down. Again, because water has a very low viscosity. In corn syrup, notice how much slower the marble is sinking. Because corn syrup is thick, it has a very high viscosity. In the oil, the marble sinks in really, really fast. Oil has a very low viscosity. And in the honey, again, think about this. What kind of viscosity is honey going to have? Good. As I said earlier, it has a high viscosity, which means the marble flows very, very slowly. Get rid of that one. Okay. Another physical property is malleable. Oh, we're going to do conductivity first. Conductivity. It's the ability of the material to let heat and or electricity flow. So, for example, there are some things that actually conduct heat very well, but not electricity. I'll give you an example of that here in a moment. But let's talk about this one. Something that has a very high conductivity allows electricity to flow very quickly, very easily. It also gets hot or cold very, very quickly, a.k.a. metals. Metals do this. Uh, copper. Copper is used all the time in wiring. Why? Because copper wiring is very good for conducting electricity. Uh, Copper is also used for pots and pans because it's awesome for getting hot very, very quickly on the stove, but it also cools down very quickly when you take it off the stove. Something that conducts electricity very, very slowly or conducts heat very, very, very slowly okay, is examples of cotton, fiberglass, which is the pink insulation in your attic, wood, another rubber. Rubber is another example of this. So again, thing, something that has low conductivity does not allow electricity to flow very quickly. It also doesn't get hot or cold very, very quickly. It gets hot or cold very slowly. Water actually is a good, well, these are called insulators. So water is a good insulator. Water does not get hot very, very quickly. It does not get cold very, very quickly. It does not conduct electricity very well. So it's a good insulator. So things with low conductivity are called insulators. Things with a high conductivity are called uh, conductors, like a metal. But glass, so 
glass is kind of weird. Glass will get hot very, very quickly. Uh, easy way to know that is if you just put like a glass of water or maybe a coffee mug of water, that's more porcelain, but still, or ceramic, in a microwave for like two minutes, that glass is going to get very, very, very hot. But glass does not conduct electricity. So there's things that are that have high electrical conductivity, and there's things that have a high electrical conductivity. But the word conductivity alone can re be referring to either heat or electricity. If we look at some wire, uh, just normal wiring around your house, think of any plug that you plug in, like a lamp. Usually, that cord has a rubber or maybe a plastic coating. Why? Well, that's an insulator. That way you don't get shocked because inside that cord is a metal wire that conducts electricity. But if you touch that bare wire, you're going to get shocked. So they coat the metals with some kind of rubber insulation or a plastic insulation because this has a low conductivity. Malleability is, move this out of the way, malleability is the third physical uh, property we want to talk about. It's the ability to fold or flatten a substance without it shattering. So for example, metals usually have a very high malleability. It's very easy to fold and bend a metal, as we see here of this blacksmith. However, if you have a very low malleability, it means you're brittle. So some things that are brittle include, well, hard plastic, like my PS4 controller here. If I try to bend this, it's going to snap. It's going to break. Okay, I can't. I cannot hammer this flat. So hard plastic has a low malleability. Soft plastic has a high malleability, as you can see. I can easily kind of bend that. Uh, glass. So glass at room temperature has a low malleability. If you try to hammer glass, it just shatters. However, if you heat it up, you can actually bend glass to a certain point before it breaks. But for the most part, glass, hard plastics, those have a low malleability, whereas metals have a very high malleability. They're very easy to fold and bend. Hardness, common sense, it's how hard something is. Some things are very, very hard, like a diamond is super hard, whereas chalk is very, very soft and break it apart. Boiling points and melting points. So this is obviously just the temperatures required to make something either turn from a liquid to a gas or melting point would be something to go from a solid to a liquid. Uh, opposites of these would be the freezing point, condensation point, but you should know what these are. So these are just some examples of physical properties. Again, physical properties are characteristics that you can describe and observe of a material that doesn't actually change the material. And speaking of changing, a physical change. So move this out of the way. A physical change is when some of the properties of that material change, but the material itself does not change. So for example, if you freeze water, okay, it changes from a liquid to a solid, but it's still water. Yeah, you change the hardness. Water is not hard. Ice is harder than water. So you change the hardness. You change its viscosity. Liquid water flows very quickly. Ice doesn't really flow. So but it's still water, so there is a physical change. If you cut your hair in this picture, guess what? If you cut your hair, it's still hair. It's shorter hair, but you don't cut your hair and it turns into cheese. That doesn't happen. Okay. So a physical change, again, is when you change a material, but it stays the exact same material. So, for example, a piece of paper. I rip it. It's still paper. Both halves of these are paper. It didn't really, I changed the shape, I changed the size, but I didn't change the material itself. That's a physical change. And that's it for physical properties.